It is a beautiful morning. And it is always a blessing every time we come before God's presence to worship, to thank Him, and to honor Him for who He is. He has been so good to us. He has seen us through the week. He has taken care of us. Despite of all the worries and the struggles we have gone through. Despite of the pain and sicknesses we might be having. Our God is a great God. I want to welcome you to Zana Community Church. As, as we come to worship the Lord, we are always blessed to have you with us. And every time we come together as children of God, the heavens are open. And the angels join with us to worship the Lord. So I urge you, my brother and sister, wherever you are, watching from, wherever you are listening from, please open up your heart. Forget about your worries and troubles. Cast your cares unto the Lord. For he will take care of you. I welcome you to God's word this morning. In Psalm 71. And we shall read a few verses from this uh, portion. We shall read verses 1 up to 5. And as you read, uh, as you follow along in your own translation, as you follow in your own translation, to reflect on the beauty and the goodness of the Lord. This is the reading of God's word. In you, O oh Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Rescue me and deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be a rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give, give the command to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked. From the grasp of the evil and cruel men. For you have been my hope, O oh sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. The psalm we have read is a prayer for God's help. He reflects on the majesty of the Lord. He looks at God as a refuge. And when he is beginning his prayer, he tells God, in you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. As we go through the worries and the troubles of this life, 
I want to ask you where have you sought refuge? Who are you trusting? What are you putting your confidence in? Are I counsel you, my friend, to be of the same mind as the psalmist. Make God your refuge. Make him your rock of protection. And he will always be with you. He will deliver you. He will deliver you from all your troubles. Even from the hand of the wicked men. That seek your life. Trust the Lord. Hope in him. In verse 5 he says, You have been my hope, O sovereign Lord. My confidence since my youth. You have all the protection. When the Lord is your refuge. Forgetting about all your troubles and all your, your sicknesses, all your deaths this morning. Let us go before the Lord in prayer, thanking Him, praising Him, and lifting up His holy name. Because when He is exalted, He will Calm down and deliver us. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning, giving you praise because you are a holy God. You deserve the glory and you deserve all the honor, Lord. You are the I am who I am God. The God who never changes. The branch of righteousness. The rock of our salvation. Jehovah Jireh God. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Sabbath. Jehovah our comfort. We give you praise. We worship you this morning. Lord, we want to surrender our hearts to you. We surrender all our cares to you. Father, we lay prostrate before you. We lay naked before you. Asking you to clothe us. May you feel us with your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Ghost fire burn within us and outside of us. And may you consume every sin there is in our lives. As you prepare our minds and hearts and bodies to worship you. We desire to see you glorified in your glory. In everything that we do. And we seek for your presence in the midst of your people who are watching and listening in worship to your name. Father, move and meet each one according to their needs. Minister to our souls your peace. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to rise up. You can rise up wherever you are. If you are seated in your house. We are going to be singing for the Lord. And if you are driving, you can harm along. 
as we sing praises to our God, God as we worship his name because there is power in worship the walls of Jericho were thrown down when the children of Israel blew the trumpet so praise to the Lord. So rise up please wherever you are. Feel liberty to worship the Lord. In Uganda, we are still under lockdown. But we thank God for this opportunity that we can worship Him. Amen. Amen. Hello, hello. Welcome again to this part of worship. I thank God that you're here with us today as we were last week. I thank God that we are all here. I will request you to stand up as we're going to sing and dance to our Lord. We are singing and we are starting with this first song. It's called, And Can It Be That I Should Gain an Interest in the Savior's Blood, Jesus Who Died for Me. You know, He paid all the cost. What an amazing love He has for us. So let's stand up and worship together and mean it that really Jesus died and paid it all for us. Hallelujah. Amen.
mulokozi wange mulokozi wiwo era tumutendereza umwana gwe Sai go 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 to to na na go to to go to to na. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesu muro kozi wange leonze. Tumu 
wa matendo e atuo nyoyo tatumuwe tumuwechiwa tumuwa matendo e atuo nyoyo e mukama mukulu mukulu mukama mukulu atumuwechiwe mukama munene Matendo, eh, atuo nyoyo, katumuwe Tumuwe chitiwa, tumuwa matendo Eh, atuo nyoyo, eh, mukama mukulu Mukulu, mukama mukulu Katumuwe chitiwa, mukama wamuendo Wamuendo, mukama wamuendo Katumuwe chitiwa Come on
mukani soka tonda fe tuja jori kabaka 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 ngatukuwe chitiwa tuwa tulanti gwe mukuru wa sunny day gwa guani do kutendele sewa gwe katondo we mirembe jona kabaka wawula mwa fe katondo mwonya wa fe katondo mugabilizu wa fe katondo muyambi wa fe oli luazir wa fe oli ngabo ya fe oli chigocha fe oli chidu kilocha fe mukama angembele tu yinze ye uoji jori je tutukila eli gwe katondo fe je tusango bloko si eli gwe je tusango Sanga mani, jetu sango kubedwa Jangu noru na kuruwa ilo kabaka abaka abaka Osu sinka na abana babobu wala na abobu lenzi Abali ya yonga batabudwa, ngembele ba yinze Ngebi gambo biba susego, ngebi zubiba tabude Nga mabanja gali nga mabanja, nga baso bedwa Nga ikane mchibira, nga babatu nuleru inelu itabala bayobu yambi Tunadukia woku jakeri gwe, uchawo ndikibwa Njobu yambi wafebu veri gwe Omudu wa Dawudi ya yogi anti naimu sama soga ngeri Sosi, obu yambi wange bufawa, obu yambi wange buferi mukama Tata tutunulide guwa mwezi, kwa katonda tabula umukulave naku Katonde chitu kilocha fe, amanyi gafe, kwa tukule mbele ngo muliro Tukule mbele ngo muliro Oyo che, buli biba debi kute, obulamu wa fe Biba debi sibie, ama gena ga fe Biba debi sibie, eminimu jia fe Biba debi kuba makaga fe Tata le komulio gugwo che, le komulio gugu tusensele Le komulio gugu wakemu ndamu fe Nebuelu, ela chitiwa chochila visiwe Neli ava tulaba tata, bate gerenti katonda fokole bikulu Yogele liyonu butonuo ya nonyo muzjara Tato yogele okuzara, yogele okuone li ava line nduade Yogero bugabili seraba inebye tago Yogero kusasurwa kwa mabanje Liaba lina mabanja Agari diu na yenga teba manji Sente jesigenda kufa Gabira abana bo mulinye ya yesu Abano nye milimu mukama Kuchisara chine chicho kutata gana Tata bawe echisa bateke koku ganja Na abali na bibakula mukama wange Na milimu jabo juo mukisa Bibakwa atakuma na boku gazua Bala boku kula kulana Bala boku gena maso Mulinye lia mukama fe yesu Tuko wale Sacho, kabaka, kabaka, kabaka. Chike kakano, kuchigambo, chonga, chigendo, kulangirwa Omoyo mtukufu jangoyo, gereli ya bantubo Tatareka, omwele zao, avewo Obelewo kabaka, kabaka, kabaka Jawebi gambo vye, oyo gerebi gambo vyo Tata, naba ulirizaba, uomu kisanga, ba ulirize chigambo cho Mkweba zoro, haba wele zao, mukama Haba kubi baby fuga, haba yimbi Haba kola mumidi ya mukama, haba kama Ba ashas, naba labo, nabo na mukama Boko za samu ngerie ye Njauro, tata ba uomu kisa, ba kula kula nye, ba gazie, ba sisinka nebuli mundunga bu wakwetaga Habana ba habali yomu kama, haba kutunuli daba kulindira Lika bala bobu lunjibo, bala bechi sacho, bala bobu gabilizibo, bala ba amanyigo Elaba kumeono olu imba, nobu julizi, ngaboge na tikatona fe, atukole debikulu Tukue chitibwa netendo, molinye liyamu kama fe, yesu, amina We welcome you this uh, moment uh, as we uh, come to the reading and listening uh, unto God's word. The message for us today is God from the book of Matthew. Chapter 25 Verses 1 through 13 And it is, it is entitled Will the marriage day of the Lord Find you prepared for your husband Will the marriage day of the Lord find you prepared for your husband. Are you prepared for the marriage night of the Lord? But before we proceed, let me ask my brother to read for us the text. He's going to be reading in English. 
And I'll ask you to follow in your own translation. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. This is the reading of God's word. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish, one, the foolish ones took their lamp, lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At the midnight, the cry rang out. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones say to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, they may, they may not be enough for both and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to, the, to, the, to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived and the virgins who were ready went, went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you add a blessing to your word. Holy Spirit, the great teacher of all, make meaning of what you have given us today to deliver to your people. May we diminish and may you be great and great through us. Be magnified as you bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will the marriage day of the Lord find you prepared for your husband? Are you ready for the coming of your husband. For the Bible tells us that he's coming to take a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's coming for his church. A church without blemish. A church without spot. A church without wrinkle. But the question is, will you be found prepared Will you be found without spot? Will you be found without wrinkle? We live in the days of the end time. The time about which we are told Christ will come to take his bride without spot or wrinkle. And time and again, scripture tells us concerning that day, that concerning that day and the hour, no one knows, not even the son of 
man. It is only in the hands custod of the Father. We are told that it will come like a thief in the night. At a time when men least expect his coming. What a blessing. It will be for them that will be found prepared. For his coming. But what shame. What horror. What disgrace. What shock will cover them. That will be found not ready for his coming. It will sweep them by surprise. His coming will surprise them. It will be a moment for it will be a moment of shock. A moment of great panic. I want to tell you, my friends, that the moment that is meant for joy to the bride will be at the same time a moment that will cause horror and fear and panic in the hearts of those that have lived their lives foolishly in their wait for his coming. There are so many people in this world that are waiting for the day of the Lord. That are waiting for the day of his marriage feast. But as we have read from the text, there are two categories of people that are waiting for his coming. They are all eager. They are all anticipating his coming. But they are totally different in their nature and character. As you prepared? Are you prepared for his coming? The Lord will come at a time when men do not expect him at an unexpected hour. The bridegroom will come. And for the purpose of our message, our enlightenment today, we are going to consider four points from this portion of scripture. And the first one will be the nature of the person's waiting. And secondly, we are going to look at the fact that though he may be delayed for a time, but surely he will come. Thirdly, we shall consider the fact that those that are prepared will enter with him to the banquet feast. And the last one will be the foolish virgins will come at a time when the door is shut. Now I want to ask you a question. And probably you are seated with someone where you are. Maybe you can turn to them and ask them what kind of virgin are you? 
ikwe oli oli mbelera chikula chichikachi what kind of virgin are you gwe oli mbelera chi abakesi kesi oba sirusiru it is not amazing to know that a lot of people in this world live with some kind of or with a vivid anticipation for a particular day. A day that is unlike any other. A day in which all their pain a day in which all their miseries and sicknesses will be dealt away with. It is in every man's heart, whether consciously or subconsciously, to think of a day when all the suffering will be gone, when all the pain will be done away with, a day where there will be no sickness, a day where there will be no pain, where there will be no, will be no debts, where there will be no problems. Christians and unchristians alike. They all have hope that there will be such a day. But this longing this longing has always been in the hearts of men. Ever since the fall, it is this hope for such a day that keeps men going every day. We wake up every day because we, we have some belief somehow that someday all our troubles, all our cares will be dealt with. We wait we anticipate that day. Although men may not know who will bring that fulfillment to their hope, I want to welcome you to God's word today from the text where we have read the text that tells us about the bridegroom the Lord as our bridegroom will come will come to take us to his marriage feast. The text say, has said that at that time the kingdom of heaven will be like it, it will be like the like ten virgins who took their lamps. Let us look at the nature of the person's waiting. The nature of the person's waiting. When you read verses 1 through 4, the Bible says, And that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. 
The Bible shows us that there were ten virgins that took their lumps and went out to meet the bridegroom. But five of these were foolish and five were wise. How did it happen? How did the distinction between the virgins happen? Look at verse 3. The Bible says the foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. They took their lamps but never took oil with them. However, the wise ones took oil in jars along with their lamps. Before this message goes to anyone who has not believed in the Lord, there are a lot of people who claim to be in the Lord to be in a relationship with the Lord. They claim to be betrothed to the Lord. But the way they wait for him, they behave as the foolish virgins did behave. Like the foolish five foolish virgins, many Christians today are living their Christian lives having their lamps but with no oil. They have their lamps but they are carrying no oil with them. The way they live their lives does not show at all that they are waiting for the bridegroom to come. Their behavior, their lifestyle does not show at all that they have the oil to keep the lantern burning. They have empty lamps. The spirit in them is grieved. The word of God which is a lamp unto our feet is, is never anywhere in them. They don't, they don't treasure God's word. They grieve the Holy Spirit in their lifestyle. It is these Bano that are reflected here as the foolish virgins. They looked, they, are in, they appeared to be virgins. They had the appearance of virgins. They, are, they appear to be waiting. They were with the other virgins also. And when they set out to meet the bridegroom, all of them followed. But they lacked wisdom. They lacked wisdom in the things of the Spirit. They are those that lack wisdom in the things of God. They were unwise. But we are told that the others, however, 
who were wise took oil in their jars along with their lamps. So there are two kinds of people in the church that are waiting for the coming of the Lord. There are those that do not care at all. There are those who do not mind at all about what is needed for them to be qualified to meet the and they just leave anyhow. Even when they are coming to meet him, they, they don't care. They carry their lamps, but they are empty. They have no oil. You see them singing, but they are empty. They serve, but they are empty. I want to ask you, my friend, what kind of person are you before the Lord? If the Lord is to come today, will he see you as a wise son or daughter? Or he will see you as one of the foolish virgins? Do you have oil in your lamp? Do you have reserves for your reserves of oil for your lamp? Are you dependent on the Holy Spirit and the Word of God? Hello. Are you wise or foolish? Some were wise, five were wise, and five were foolish. What is amazing, we are told these girls were, these, these were virgins. They were virgins. And when you look at them, you would see a virgin. They were really virgins. Good people. But they lacked the values that would qualify them to the bride, bridegroom. So there are so many of us that are cosmetic before the Lord. Banji, tu sige mimwa, ne tulabika, nga tuliba katona na yenga, tulibi chupuli. And the Lord wants to check us today. Mukama agala tukebero The Lord wants to check your heart. Ayagala kebero mutima go. He wants you to look into your heart. Ayagala tuli mutima go manye wogwa. And consider your ways. You had better be wise. Chuka, and not be a fool. Because there are dire consequences for your foolishness. Secondly, Secondly, Though the Lord may be delayed for a time, but surely He will come. We are told in verse 4, verse, verse 5, sorry, the bridegroom was a long time in coming. And they all became drowsy and fell asleep. You know, as we wait for the Lord is coming, as we wait for His appearance, as we wait for Him to come and take us home, a lot of times, we slumber. We become drowsy. There are times when we get into sleep. And if slumber gets you when you are not prepared, my friend, then it gets worse for you. 
Verse 5 tells us that he the bridegroom was long in coming. And they all became drowsy. And, and fell asleep. These days when you tell people about the, the second coming of our Lord. A, a lot of people take it to be a hearsay. They take it to be a myth. They, 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 they have a lot of excuses to make. They have a lot of arguments to give. Even Christians in the church. They live as though there is no second coming for our Lord. They live as if the Lord is not going to come to take his bride. They do not mind about their lifestyle. Mind about what the Lord has commanded his church to do. We first say his commandments and his statutes. When you look at many Christians today, you cannot tell whether they are Christians or they are never at all. The way they talk, the way they behave, the way they dress. Oh, oh, in Yambaradero. Because he delayed. Many have lost their hope. Many think he will never come. We are told that he, the bridegroom, it was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep but there's something I don't want you to forget there are two kinds of virgins two kinds of people that, way, that had come to meet the bridegroom. Five are wise. Five are unwise. When he delayed, both the wise and, and the unwise, unwise, those that were prepared and those that were not prepared for his coming, they became drowsy. They slumbered and slept. You might be there wondering when will the Lord come. And maybe you have prayed. You have prayed this prayer asking Lord when will you come. And end all this suffering in the world. And all this misery. When will you come. And take us out of this plague. The corona virus plague. But I want you to note. We are told that he delayed for a time. Because of, because of delay, many slumbered and slept. But verse 6 says, At midnight, at the midnight hour, a cry rang out. Hear the bridegroom. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. He is the bridegroom. Come meet him. And as seven says, then all the virgins walk up and trimmed their lamps. They walk up and trimmed their lamps. Although he had delayed. The Bible tells us at the midnight hour a, a sound was raised saying here's the bridegroom come out meet him. Come to meet him. 
You have been hearing messages about the coming of the Lord. You have heard messages asking you to come to God in repentance. And, and you have heard the gospel of God is grace preached to you. I'm talking to you, Christian. You, the one who listens to God is one every day. But you have never given attention to what is being told you. you have never taken the warning about his coming seriously. You have been in slumber and sleep. But I want to tell you Jesus is going to come back. The Lord is going to come back. The virgins had waited. And the bridegroom seemed not to be coming. He delayed. He did not uh, meet their expected time. He came at his own time. At the right time. When he was supposed to come. He appeared. They were supposed to wait for him. The virgins were supposed to wait for the bridegroom. They had to wait for him. But we are told they slumbered and slept. While sleeping, at midnight, the cry rang out. Here is the bridegroom. Come to meet me. I want to tell you. You have been hearing the message of God is Christ. And rejecting it. And despising it. And not giving attention to all his warnings. And not Paying attention to his call. Like the bridegroom that came at the midnight hour. The Lord is going to come at an unexpected time. At a day you do not expect him. At an hour when you do not expect him. But the question is. When he comes. Will he find you prepared? Will he find your lamp filled with oil? Will he find you having extra to keep your, your lamp? Tree? We are told then all the virgins walk up. And trimmed their lamps. But we need to remember. Five have oil for their lamps. The other five are foolish. They never bothered to carry oil. Now they have trimmed them. They have lighted them. But where's the oil to keep the, the lamps burning? Because, because from when you look carefully at this text. It appears that although the sound was made for his coming, he was still at a distance. And because they had to prepare for his coming, having come at midnight, they had to light their lamps. Now, at this moment, the nature of these virgins comes to surface. They remember they needed to have carried Listen to what verse 8 says. 
the foolish ones said to the wise, give, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. I plead with you, my brother, my sister. Do not be foolish. Do not be like the foolish virgins. Do not be Christians who are foolish. Be Christians who are wise in the spirit. Who are wise in the things of God. Walk in Walking with Christians that does not make you or grant you access to the bridegroom. Okutambula na balokolo kutula mukanisa kuweleza tebi kusovoze sa kubanti ori 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 tula no mami. Waiting together with Christians does not make you worthy to be before Him. O kulindi ya kuo, ngolindi ya Kristo na baloko na baloko le te chikufula sani te. Until you are kuvero mukole. Until you are fully prepared. Now when the Lord had come, when the bridegroom had come, now, we see the foolish ones now remembering that their lamps needed oil. Please turn to your friend, turn to your children, turn to your neighbor and ask them what kind of lantern are you carrying? Do you you have oil in your lamp? Are you prepared for the coming of the bridegroom? If he comes now, although you were asleep for a time, will he still find you prepared? They had all gone to slumber. You know, sometimes we forget. There are times when we, we, we read about the promises of God. When we read about His word. And we take it lightly. We take it as granted. We take it as if it is so far away in the future. Then we, we, we think we have a lot of time with us. Jesus one day said, yes, He who believes in me has crossed from death unto life. But he who does not believe me is condemned already because he has not believed in the only begotten of God. Do you take God's word to be the truth? Do you take his promises to be real? To be serious? They never cared. They did not prepare. They, they, they were there following the crowd. But they were not prepared for the bridegroom. This brings us to our third point. Which says that those that are prepared will enter with him to the marriage feast. Those that are prepared will enter with him to the marriage feast. They will enjoy the feast with him. They will dine with him. They will sit with him. Jesus said, I have gone to my father to prepare places for you that where I am, there you will be also. I want to tell you, my friends, that on the marriage day of the Lamb, when Jesus comes back to take his bride, he will take us to be with him. And when that day comes, we shall be feasting with him. We shall be rejoicing with him. We shall celebrate with him. We shall enjoy him. 
from verse 9 through 10 now the foolish ones are, have asked for oil they are remembering their lamps need oil and now the wise the wise tell them ah they, they tell the wise ones give us some of your oil our lamps are going out and I want you to listen to this in verse 9 no they replied there may not be enough for both of us Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. The oil of the Lord has been poured out for you, brothers and sisters. The oil that would help to keep your lamps burning has been offered to you freely. But men of you have not bothered at all. A lot of you have deliberately chosen not to take it. A lot of you have deliberately refused to draw some for your lamps. You listen to the word of the Lord every day. You listen to God is, to the preaching of God is what? You listen. You have it. You have Bibles in your homes. You do not read them. You do not study them. Now when the Lord comes, the foolish ones were asking. They were asking for oil. But like I told you, although the alarm was raised, he was still at a distance. He was still at a at distance. These virgins needed their oil. They needed the oil to keep their lamps burning until he arrives. Now the warnings are going out about his coming. I urge you my friends I plead with you. Please draw oil for your lamps. Have your lamp, have reserves for your lamps. Now when the, the wise ones refused, they advised them. Instead, Go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Friends, I want to tell you you are now not taking God's word seriously. You are not taking your bridegroom to be serious. The time is going to come when it will be very difficult for you to depend on the others. When will be a time when it will be hard for you get assistance from others if you have not refused to take care if you have refused to prepare it's better you prepare your life for his coming now it's better you give your life to him fully it's better you surrender your life to Jesus give him your life before that day comes because when that day comes you will have no friends to help the Bible tells us but while they were on their way to buy the oil the bridegroom arrived they refused to prepare beforehand. 
They had all the time to prepare. They, they had all the time before he came to carry oil. But they, they never, never bothered. bothered. They waited until the bridegroom came. Now they remembered that they needed oil. When it was too late, they thought maybe they would get help from their colleagues. But it was too late to, to get help at the time. Before the day of the Lord comes, brothers and sisters, Take caution. Prepare yourself for his coming. We are told while they were on their way to, the, to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. This is what the Bible tells us in Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39. And it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. The Lord will surprise us at his coming. He will surprise you. It will be very shameful if you have been walking with the other virgins waiting for his coming and yet you were never prepared. And yet you never fully surrendered your life to him. All your days you lived a, a life of a heart. A life of an irresponsible woman. A woman that is not fit for the bridegroom. And lastly, the foolish virgins came at a time when the door was shut. Later, we are told in verse 11, after the others had entered with the bridegroom, later the others also came. And they called, Sir! Sir! They said, Open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. What a shock. What a blaring sound it will be to those that will be found not prepared for the bridegroom. When the Lord will say to their face, I do not know you. You know, this message is not for those outside the church. This message is specifically for you, Christian, who live a life of hypocrisy, who are seen as virgins, but when in actuality, you don't show any responsibility at 
You don't care whether the Lord comes or he doesn't come. You are just, you are just following the crowd. Jesus one day said in the in Matthew, that on that day men will come to me saying Lord, Lord didn't we do miracles in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? And I will tell them depart from from me, me, you workers of iniquity, I do not know you. Check your life. Check your lamp. Is your lamp having oil to keep it burning to the time when the bridegroom comes? Are you walking Responsibly. Are you living as a responsible virgin? I want you to remember the Bible says He is coming to take his bride without spot or wrinkle. Without spot or wrinkle. It is such a pity that these had waited they had waited they waited for him they had traveled all the way to meet him but they had put their hopes in the wrong things they had lived irresponsible lives they didn't really care for his coming. Will the Lord find you prepared? Or oh, you will be cast up. You will be locked out. Like the foolish virgins. To you who are not in Christ. What is it that you are putting your trust in? You know, I've grown up hearing people say this. Taking this from the theory that says all roads lead to Rome. I've heard people say all religions lead us to God. We are off. Seeking for God. I want to tell you. There is no other way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. And he says. No one comes to the father. But by me. If you want to be on that marriage feast, you better prepare your life by giving everything, surrendering your life to Jesus. Let him direct you. Let him fill your life. Let him saturate your heart, your mind, your everything. And he will have your lamp burning. He will give you, he alone can give you the oil you need to keep your lamp burning. Surrender your life to Jesus. And you, Christian, who are living your lives in hypocrisy, better be warned. It will be too late to repent. May the Lord bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We thank you for your word. We ask that you add a blessing to him. 
and use it by the power of your spirit to convict us of sin and to cause us to come to you in repentance. Help us to be reminded that your coming is very imminent. It is very close. You are going to come at a time when we do not expect you. Lord, it is our prayer. As we walk with you, may you help us to be prepared. And not to be ashamed. And not to be cast out. We depend on you. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May his countenance go with you. May he by his spirit cause you to remember that he will surely come. But will you be prepared to meet him? the Lord help you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for the word we have had this morning. It's really a good blessing from our Lord. And he has given us a true word from the Bible. His word. Thank the Lord for using his servant to bring us this word. That will the marriage day of the Lord find you ready for your husband. Will I be ready? Will you be ready? We have to work on that every day. And our last song as we conclude this service is going to be, Will, will Jesus find you watching? <laughs> yes, will Jesus find you watching? He told us to be alert as we have heard in the sermon that those ladies had, they had to have their lamps full of oil. So we have to have our life ready for the coming of our husband. Be blessed as we sing this last song. Amen. Amen. comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night. Faithful to him, will he find us watching with our lungs so trimmed and bright? Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright
Lord, find us ready. It's your work. It's my work to work on that. We have to be ready for the bridegroom is soon returning. God bless you. You have enjoyed your company as we worship the Lord. Next week we shall be here, God willing. God bless you. May you please have a blessed, lovely week. Amen. Amen.